Hi everyone, I am finally back with another IKEA hack for you. This time we have built a bench in our hallway because we really needed a place to store all of our shoes. And we also wanted somewhere to sit because it's a lot more comfortable sitting down while putting your shoes on. But let's move on to the hack. Whenever I start a new IKEA hack, the first thing I do is I go to IKEA.com and design the solution that I want. Sometimes I also draw a sketch, but I didn't do that this time because this was actually a pretty easy hack. For this hack, I chose the Bestow bench. It's actually a TV bench, but it's perfect for bench hacks. It's also relatively cheap. This bench is 180 centimeters long and 40 centimeters deep. And inside there are three separate rooms and I also got a shelf for each of those and three cabinet doors. You could also choose drawers for this, but I personally don't think the Bestow drawers are that good. I find them hard to adjust since they're not the best quality drawers. So I chose to go with a simple cabinet door instead. After my husband and I picked up the Bestow bench from Ikea, I started assembling it. It's generally simple to assemble, but these screws were pretty hard to put in, so I had to use a wrench to do that. None of my screwdrivers would do the job. I'm not sure if this is the case for all Bestow benches in other countries, but it was with this one and with another Bestow bench that we picked up and assembled for my mom recently. So if you end up having trouble assembling it, just pick up a wrench instead of the screwdriver. We wanted our bench to be a little taller, so in order to achieve that, my husband made this platform. We wanted the platform to be about the same height as our baseboards, and that's about 12 centimeters. Otherwise, the bench would be way too low to sit comfortably on, and that would be very unpractical. I would always recommend that you build the platform out of MDF. It's easier to work with, it looks better, and it doesn't have any irregularities but my husband insisted we use this wood since we already had it. I agreed reluctantly, just use MDF instead. That's my opinion. It's really the better choice for this. Just make sure the MDF is thick enough to support the bench. He put it together using screws and made sure the bench would be properly supported all over. We ended up with a platform that was 180 centimeters long, 50 centimeters deep and 12 centimeters tall. And to make sure the bench and platform was stable, he attached the platform to the wall and the Bestow bench to the platform. Now, the Bestow bench is actually only 40 centimeters deep, but we wanted our final result to be about 50 centimeters deep, so we made some adjustments. So what we did was we aligned the bench with the front of the platform like this before we attached them. We also decided early on that we wanted to cover the whole bench in MDF. If you don't have the proper equipment to cut the MDF at home, I can really recommend going to the local hardware store and having it all cut there because it's so much easier. And each piece is just cut totally perfect. So we had the guy at the hardware store cut the two pieces for the sides. Since we had a big piece of leftover MDF from earlier projects, we used that for the top. The top is 10 millimeters thick and the sides are 18 millimeters thick. We also wanted the top and the sides to be aligned with the cabinet doors. The doors are 18 millimeters, so the sides had to poke out 18 millimeters for a nice result here, and the same goes for the top. For that, we used clamps and double checked that the MDF is positioned how we wanted it before putting in any screws. And after that, we attached some decorative elements. We still had some leftover moldings and baseboard from when we made our IKEA Billy bookcase hack, and we wanted to keep this bench in the same style. So we used this molding for the sides to decorate the bench, and we attached the baseboard below in between the sides. And I was a little skeptical of this solution in the beginning, but it actually turned out really nicely. Then 
I sanded all the places that needed sanding and I also made sure to cover up any holes from the screws. I let the grout dry and then I applied a new layer since grout always sinks a little. I waited for the second layer to dry and sanded any leftover grout away. And then it was time to caulk all of the small openings I could find. I always use baby wipes to wipe away excess caulk since I find that it is by far the easiest way to do it. The caulk needed to dry for 24 hours before I could do anything else. If you do paint over it before the 24 hours are up, there's a chance that the paint will crack as the caulk contracts the more it dries. So please wait at least 24 hours before doing so or more if the caulk is really thick and make sure it is dry before grabbing your paintbrush and primer. I always use Jotun Universal Heftekona for all of my projects. This primer only has to dry for two hours, so when those two hours were up, I immediately started painting the bench with the Jotun Supreme Finish paint that I also used for our Billy Bookcase hack and other hacks in our home. It's the same color, gloss and everything. The color is called Vit Comfort and it's medium glossy so it's easy to wipe away any dirt with a damp cloth. This coat needs at least eight hours to dry so I waited to the day after before I painted it for the second time. And then all we needed to do was decorate and paint the cabinet doors. And I wanted to decorate them in the same way as I decorated the cabinet doors for our bookcase in the living room. I really love how that turned out so why not do it again I thought. Earlier I've used wooden moldings but I found a much better alternative. These are made of polyurethane. It's a lot harder than polystyrene and they're also a lot cheaper than wooden moldings. They're actually only half the price of the wooden moldings so I bought a lot of them. I need a lot for future hacks so stay tuned for those. But back to the bench. I cut six of each size for the three cabinet doors. Since the doors measure 60 by 40 centimeters, I cut six pieces that measured 32 centimeters and six pieces that measured 52 centimeters. I marked on the cabinet doors where I wanted to place the moldings and then I glued them on. When they were dry, my husband helped me place a six millimeter piece of MDF in the middle of the molding square. In the beginning, we just eyeballed it and then used a ruler to measure its position compared to the moldings. I caulked all of the moldings and MDF pieces the day after to make sure that the glue had dried. I wouldn't want to push anything out of place by caulking too early. And then I once again grabbed my primer and paint and did the cabinet doors exactly as I did the rest of the bench. Jonathan, my husband, attached the cabinet doors and then it was done. I am super satisfied with the bench and it's just the perfect place to store all of our shoes. We really needed that extra storage space. And now we actually just need a small mattress for the top. I already got the fabric for that. I just need to take some measurements and contact someone who can make that for me. I'm not good at sewing, so I will leave that to someone else. And now all that's left to say is thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it inspiring and helpful. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more IKEA hacks, product reviews and lifestyle content. And I will have a new video for you again very soon. Thank you.